You're my deliverer. You're my strong tower. I can run into your name and I can be safe. You're God. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Say it again. I love you. I love you.
forever. We'll worship forever. We'll worship forever, Lord. We'll worship forever. We'll worship forever. We'll worship forever, Lord. Thank you so very much for joining me this Sunday morning. I pray that you're having a wonderful morning in the Lord, and I pray that you're ready to hear something out of God's Word. To all the worshipers of Gospel Tabernacle in Dallas and Houston, to all the Rainbow Fellowship churches and pastors and spouses and saints of God alike, I'm just so glad that you decided to make this a part of your morning. I pray that the Lord bless you real good. I pray that you've had a, a wonderful week. You know, this this been some turbulent times. We, we're really dealing with a lot of things right now in this country uh, that uh, I solicit, uh, we as the people of God, would earnestly pray that the Lord would really minister to uh, our country. Our, our country really need healing right now. You know, we're so seemingly so divided in so many ways, but uh, uh, we serve a God that can bring it all together and make it work out for the good. And and I, I want you to be mindful of that. You know, if my people, which are called by my name, you know the book, uh, if we would pray, it, it would make a huge difference, I believe, in the affairs of men. And so I'm going to ask you to stand with me in prayer that the Lord will cover our country, that uh, righteousness will prevail, that cooler heads will prevail. And so please, I beseech you by the mercies of God that we come together and go before our God and we call upon the name of our God, that our God, our God, who is, as old saints will say, in control, will sustain and keep this country. And beloved, we know, not, not just the country, but the nations of the world. This, this world, this world need healing. Yes, it does. The, the, the society at large, the, the world need healing from some 
from some, I mean, from the divisiveness that's taking place, not just in this country, but in society at large. And so I want you to stand with me in prayer that, and, and let's believe God together that God will send a healing bomb, a salve. Is there a bomb in Gilead that can make the wounded whole? And I say that it is, and it's the blood of Jesus Christ. And so I want you to stand with me uh, as we pray uh, that the Lord will continue to cover us. Uh, I, I pray for uh, President Trump. I pray for uh, President-elect uh, uh, Joe Biden uh, and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, that, that the Lord will give them the grace to uh, do what, uh, uh, what needs to be done to bring this country into a place of wholeness. You know, and you know as well as I, if you've been following the news, our, our country and, and society at large is so divided. And, and we just need uh, a, a calming right now. We, we need to really make sure that, that uh, we're calling upon the name of the Lord and believe in God to, to uh, heal this nation. Okay? And uh, we're standing with you. We're standing with both of you and we're standing with you, President Trump. All right. Uh, I, I'm, I'm meditating on the song, uh, Love You Forever. Uh, and, and I want to segue into what I want to talk about this morning. Uh, I love you forever. Wow. I, I love you forever. And, and it's somewhat, I think, uh, is apropos because of what I want to talk about today, because it is such a heart-wrenching thing uh, in my heart, in my mind, thinking or considering this because it deeply concerns me. Um, uh, how that, as turbulent of, of a time that we are in, and, and how God has uh, transitioned us and keeping us and sustaining us through all of this, it, it's, it's somewhat unnerving to me to know that, that there are yet many, and I do mean many, and, and this, is, this is almost grievous for me to even say, but but it needs to be said. Yeah, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around how people can yet be halted between opinions. If you really want to serve God or not, I'm trying to grasp that. I'm trying to understand that. Because, dear hearts, if there, if there is a time or ever was a time that we need God, if, 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 if COVID-19 has not convinced you of the need for your God or for God in your life as the Lord and Savior of your life, uh, I don't know what will. You know, a world war, I don't know. Be beloveds, you and I need God. If this epidemic, is, if COVID-19 has not caused you to run toward God, uh, Beloved, uh, baby, I don't know what will. This thing has no respect of persons. If, if you and I, which I am, it's obvious I'm standing here, and you, if we are alive and doing well, it's but by the grace of God. Because this thing has no respect of persons. God is keeping us. And I know there are some who have succumbed to this thing and some have died from it, but but God, man, but God, I, I'm, I'm trying to grasp, I'm trying to understand how we can still be wrestling with a, a pure and, and genuine commitment to God. You, you, you can't see now that we really need God. I, I mean, serving God right now half-heartedly, I'm trying to wrap my brain around that. I don't get it. Maybe, maybe you can give me some of your wisdom or some of your knowledge or, or your understanding as, as to why you can understand it. Because I don't understand how anyone right now cannot be running toward God. I mean, wanting to be covered by his wings, want, want to be under his, under his protective care, want to be, listen, to this, under his blood. Under his blood. I, I, I'm trying to get, grasp that, and I can't. We need God. And you need God too, whether you confess it or not. You need God. Where would you and I, I let me just, my own testimony. The testimony service is now open. I'm opening myself. I'm going to testify. I don't know where I would be without God. 
I don't know if my house would have survived it. I don't know if my mind, my, my heart, my spirit would have survived this save for the grace of God. And, and, and so I, I want to talk a little bit about that, you know, uh, you know, when, when Jesus was asked, what is the first and greatest commandment? You, do you remember what his, uh, his response was? Love the Lord thy God, paraphrasing, with everything that's within you, with, with all thy soul, with all thy might, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. Love God with everything that's within you. That is the first and greatest commandment. And, and, and I'm going to talk this morning from uh, the book of Deuteronomy. And it's the 30th chapter, and I want just two verses out of there, and I'm going to go as far as I feel the Holy Spirit will lead me. And, and I may not get through all of it because I'm kind of emotionally distraught today because I'm grieved uh, uh, because we've come through such an incredible, not come through such, let me rephrase that. We're in, yet in the midst of one of the most challenging times of humanity, of human existence. And yet, we still have people who are half-heartedly committed to God. So someone help me. Uh, send me something on social or write me a letter. Do something. Hit me up on cell phone. Do something. Help me to understand. I'm being facetious. Help me to understand how anyone with all of this that's going on in the world is struggling with their relationship with God, whether they want to be totally or fully committed to him. I don't get it, y'all. I, I don't get it. Someone, someone help me. Maybe my mind is just not sharp enough or intellectually prowessed enough to understand it. I don't get it. We should be, as the songwriter said, we should be running toward him. I, I'm running back to you. I, I'm running, I'm running back to you. If you left him, your, your testimony should be, your desire should be, I'm running back to you. And those of us who, 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 who did not relinquish our relationship with him, we ought to be holding on to him for dear life even the more. If, if we've not learned anything, we should have learned how much we need him, just how much we need him. If, if COVID has taught us anything, it, it has taught, I, certainly I know me, and I believe most of us, or many of us, let me put it like that, it has taught us just how much we need God. And, and, and I want to go into a chapter in the book of Deuteronomy, and, and it's uh, chapter 30. And, and it focuses in on God's desire, listen to this, to have a true, his desire, his desire for us to have a true relationship with him. COVID has been an incredible lesson for many of us, for, for many of us. We have learned, I have learned, and I believe I, I can get an echo chamber out there that can say that we have learned just how much we really need God. We, we, many of us, many of us have learned, can I get a witness out there just how much we need? I don't care how much you have. I don't care how much money you have in the bank. I don't care uh, the size of car you're driving or the size of the, size of the house that you live in, nor how many presidents you have in the bank. We need God because the old cliche statement, money can't handle everything. <laughs> and we know that. And some of us have, 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 you know, even sped up and even, even uh, uh, developed even a, a deeper relationship with God, even though we have things. We've not made things our God. We made him our God. We've not made things our covering. We made him our covering. And, and I just want to address, and don't tell me out, hear me out. I want to address, I want to talk to some of us today who are yet wrestling, who are yet trying to make up your mind the level of commitment you will have toward God. Really? Baby, help me to understand your rationale. You're still struggling? You're still back and forth? You're still straddling the fence as it relates to your relationship with God? What? What, what? You, ha you have not concluded in your own mind and heart as to the place 
that God would have in your life? You're still trying to back burn a God. What are you doing, sugar? Have you learned yet how uncertain life is? And it is uncertain. And, and it is uncertain. And so I, I, I just felt, felt God had put this on my heart to, to have just a, a, a heart to heart today with, with, with his people. And, and, and I know this is not, you know, telling you about blessings and doors being open and all that. But uh, uh, old, old passage, we, we don't hear it a whole lot, but uh, I'm going to quote it. What would it profit a man? If that man gains the world, but loses his soul. That's an old school scripture. But think about it. What will it profit a man if he gains the world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What on planet Earth is worth your eternal existence? I'm going to get off that. I'm going to get off because I know you, some of you didn't come to hear that. But hear me out. L let's look at Deuteronomy uh, chapter number uh, 30. I don't want you to look at me real quick. And, and I, I may have to do a two-parter. I'm not for sure. Look at verse number 19. Hear this man's heart today because I am truly concerned about us, his people. I really am, y'all. And babies, I can, I can open this book and preach from any way in here and tell you blessings and all that. And I know, I know, I know that's what we are. But, but hear me now. If, if you don't know through a pandemic, through this this that's going on in this planet, how much you need God. Let me, let me see if I can help you. Look at that Deuteronomy chapter number 30. Look at verse number 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Listen to God that I have set before you life and death. I have set before you life and death. Listen to a little more. Blessing and cursing. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose one of them. Choose you one of them. Matter of fact, he leads us into the choice, the wise choice that we should make. He said, I've said before you blessing and cursing, life and death. Listen to what he said. He said, choose life. He said, choose. He's trying to lead you down the path of non-destructiveness. He said, choose life. Listen to me, baby. Listen to me, man. Dude. Girl. Choose life. Choose life. Haven't we learned yet how uncertain this life is? Haven't we learned that? How uncertain this life is? Choose life. Choose life. Yes, Shabbat. Choose life. Choose him. Choose him. I serve God because it's my choice. It's my choice. I ch serve God because I chose to serve God. Choose life. Life in him. Life in him. Choose life. It would just be heart-wrenching to come up out of COVID-19 and anyone who understands having a relationship with God come up out of COVID-19, this incredible episode in human existence, 
and you're still struggling with, wrestling with, halted between opinions as to a relationship with God, somebody please help me. Somebody please give me some tidbit of wisdom that can help me to understand because I cannot wrap my brain around it. Anyone struggling with having a relationship with God? I don't get it. I don't get it. Oh, I hope you looking in my eyes. I don't get that. Because if we've learned anything during this season in human existence. Well, maybe I should rephrase and say what we should have learned is how valuable God really is. Listen, dear hearts, I just want to talk plain talk to you today. How valuable God. What would your house be? What would your life be? Where would your family be if God was not sustaining it? I want you to marinate on that a minute. I want you to meditate on that a minute. Where, I can testify, where would your house be? Where would your head be? Where would your emotions be? Where would you be if God wasn't sustaining and keeping your house and you? I I want you to marinate on that a minute. And now he's kept and sustained you and you still halted between opinions as to if you're going to serve him or not or to what level you're going to serve him. What are you saying? What? You're still straddling the fence? I know you didn't tune in to get this today, but this is what God gave me. And if it's not for you, pray for the person that it is for. Here, here. He, 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 look, at choose life or death, blessing the cursing. And he he leads you in the direction that you should go. He said, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That you and your seed may live. Let me make it twofold. That you and your seed may live. The seed that came up out of your womb, the, the, the seed that you birthed into existence, and also the seed that he's placed in your belly. Let me deal with both of them. You and your house, the seeds that you birthed into human existence and the seed that's in your belly. The last thing you and I want to do is to be on this planet and what he's birthed and put in our bellies, our spirit that the earth may experience, don't come to pass because of your disobedience. Because you have not solely and totally committed yourself to God and what God has put in you to birth into the, to the earthen realm, we never experienced because you made the decision to not commit all to God that he can bring forth out of you what he's placed in you. God help me, I pray. God give me how to minister this word to your people. God has placed in you, in you, a seed a ministry, an anointing inside of you out of the boundaries of glory that the world may experience, that your personal scotoma, the people that he's assigned you to, the the environment that he's assigned you to, the, 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 the arena that he's assigned you to. And they never experience it because you didn't put yourself in a birthing position so God could bring forth out of you Each of us, God, from the foundation of the world, has birthed in us, has put a seed in us, has put an anointing in us for the world to experience, for your sphere, your scotoma, what he's called and assigned you to, the arena that he's called you to. And we will never experience because you 
made the decision that you wasn't going to give your all to God that he can bring forth out of you what he has so ordained. Please don't do me like that. Please don't do me like that. I want it. I need it. I desire to see and experience what God has put in you from your mother's womb. He told Jeremiah, you know it, before I form you in the belly, before I even drop you in your mother's womb, I put it in you. I put it in you and I anointed you. And I assign people to your wild world, to your, to your world, to your environment, to your call, to your seed, that they may experience what I, the Lord thy God, has placed in you. And you won't get in place. You won't totally commit yourself to God. You keep half-heartedly committing yourself. You won't come out those streets. Oh, God, I feel someone is mad at me, but stay mad. As long as you get up and do what you need to do, you won't come out of those streets. So God can use you and bring forth out of you that is what he's placed in you, even with COVID. Even with COVID. Somebody clap back at me if you know what I'm talking about. Even with COVID, how God has sustained you through this. And you still, you still halted between opinions. You're still trying to. Listen to this. Make up your mind. Uh, try make up. Now listen, let me, let, me, let me just forewarn you. Uh, now God can help you make up your mind. <laughs> Ask Jonah. <laughs> God, God will help you make up your mind. When God finished, you'll be like Jonah. The Bible said that Jonah didn't cry out from a belly of a fish or a belly of a whale. He's, the Bible said he cried out from the belly of hell. Now, God, now, now if God need be, he know how to get you to the altar. Now, when you get that, your britches might be by burning off. <laughs> your britches may be look like sh shorts. Yeah, you had on a, a full list. I mean, just had baggy pants. And we got through. You had on some days of Duke's able to burn. So, <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I'm, come on back, David. Come on back. Come on back. I didn't because this is too serious to be follying around with. Because I, I, I mean this. I believe God has laid this in my heart. Let me go more because I, you know, y'all know how my mind works. And I, some of this is somebody over here. Yeah. But look at verse number number 20, y'all, because this is serious to me. Listen, listen to some more of this. Let me let me start back over 19. Then I'm going to work my way to 20. I call heaven and earth to record this day and against you that I have set before you life and death. Life and death, both. Not life or death. I've said before you, life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. That both thou and thy seed, and I hope you got that little dissertation. That, that, let me read it again. That both life, that, I mean, that, that both thou and and thy seed may live. Look at verse number 20. So I got lost in the scripture. Verse number 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. And that thou mayest obey his voice. And that thou mayest cleave unto him. I want to park right there for a minute. The hearts. Coming out of this thing, or through this thing, we're not out, but coming through it. I don't just love God. I'm finding myself cleaving to him. Listen to this man. I don't know what I would do without God. I want y'all to hear the preacher. I, I don't know what I would do. I don't know if I could survive without God. Tr trying to wrestle with everything and deal with everything that life uh, seems to have old our way. Because none of us really understand or know what kind of hand life will deal us. But I cannot 
imagine. I cannot grasp the possibility of dealing with it apart from God. I, I, I just, I just maybe, maybe you're stronger than I. And if you are, you know, more power to you. But as for me and my house, I, I can't imagine emotionally, psychologically. I, I, I can't imagine. I, I can't imagine the, the pressure that would be up on my heart trying to navigate through life. Without God. W- without being able to call up on him. Knowing that I'm in right standing with him. And don't have to worry about any repercussions. Because I say one thing and do another. I, I-, I confess him with my mouth. But my heart is far from it. And, and-, and knowing that. And, and here I am with a situation. My grandmother would say a situation. Here I am with a situation. And I have to wrestle in my mind knowing that I've not totally committed myself to God. Glory. With, with all the stuff that's in the world that could possibly come my way. And you know, Satan and the indigenous of hell have a knack of pointing it, of putting it in your face when you know that you've not been as committed as you confess or act or project. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. That thou mayest obey his voice. And that thou mayest cleave unto him. Cleave unto him. Cleave unto him. God, I need you every hour. I need you in my life. I need you, God, to order my steps. I need you, God, to be the God of my salvation. I need you to teach me and lead me and guide me. I need you to speak to my heart. I need you in my thoughts. I need you to help me deal with my proclivities. I need you to help me. Help me, God. Help this flesh. Help this fool mind of mine. Help me, God. Sustain me. Keep me when I have impure desires. God, minister to my heart, minister to my soul, minister to my spirit. Only the way you can. Only the way you can. Even if my heart condemns me, be greater than my heart. Even when my mind plays tricks on me, speak to my mind, speak to my heart, speak to my spirit. There's nothing but folly in this clay. That's nothing but sinful desires. But God, if you speak to my heart, if you speak to my mind, if you minister to me when I'm weak, when I'm vulnerable, when I'm in despair, I'll be able to make it. I'm just being transparent. I'm just being real because I cringe sometimes when I see those who stand and grace the pulpits act as though they don't have human proclivities. But God, who is a all-knowing God, know how to comfort and keep and sustain us through human existence. Let me go a step further, y'all. Please, bear with me. Because I'm out this morning on a mission to challenge us to come back to God. I'm coming back to you. I see you standing there. Listen to a little bit more and I'm just about finished. I know this is not going to make you shout, but I hope it makes you think. For he is thy life. Listen to this. 
for he is thy life and the length of thy days. And, and the length of thy days. I cannot even, cannot even fathom. I cannot even imagine going on the balance of my life. And I've not allowed God to have full control of my life. I can't imagine trying to live the balance of my days without God as my Savior and my Lord. With emphasis on Lord. I'm just about there. I'm just about there. That thou mayest dwell. L let me go back over this because I need to work my way to this. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. I'm, I'm going to close right there. Which the Lord swear unto our fathers. I'm just going to close right there. I believe, dear hearts, I believe, like you, that this pandemic will conclude. It will come to an end. Here's my question. When it ends, and it is going to end, what will your land look like? I want you to meditate upon that. When this is all over and it is going to be over. What will your land look like? Will it still just be running the streets? Kicking your heels up? Will it still just be about having a good time and partying? Will it still be about unmarital affairs? Still be by drugs, hypocritical relationship with God. Would it still be about one foot in the church and the other one out? Would it still be about you, your bad habits, you thinking that you're so grown that you can do whatever you want to when you get ready? Is that what it's going to be about? What, what will your world? your personal world, your scotoma that you've developed in God, in the world, in society, in your house, in your mind, with your body. What would be the reckoning? Because this will end and the story will be told. I appreciate you indulging me today. I just felt that the Holy Spirit would have me to say these things to you. And I hope you heard this man's heart. Wednesday, I'll give you something a little better. Probably more you can rejoice in. But I hope you heard this today. Choose you this day whom you will serve. How can you forgive me when I've often gone astray? How can you think of me when I do things my way? Turning my back from you, the one who loved me first, having my
Tell me you've been there and hold. 